sweet Jesus help me. Ah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just gonna calm down now. Guys, the name's Rena Dragmeal, and welcome back to Seduce Me 2, The Demon War. I bet you guys weren't expecting another upload today, right? Well, I figured, why not start the Matthew route for you guys, because I love you all. So, with that, I'm gonna start with Matthew's route, and all the parts that we've seen in Damien's route, I'm going to skip them. Uh, unless there's something, unless I pick a new choice or something. Then I will come back to it and I will show it to you guys. I won't let you, I won't skip the things that I didn't do. But we're gonna, like, for the most part, when we enter the demon world and stuff, I'm gonna skip all of that. The skip the war up until Matthew parts, you know. Alright, that's enough dilly dally. Let's start Matthew's route now. Hold on there! First of all, have you. Yeah, yes, I've read it. Oh! You do know this is Matthew's route, right? You know, that cute fourth son, the one who made Simon Tabby, the creepy doll? Yes, I am aware. Matthew's a cinnamon roll. Oh, awesome. All right then. Matthew's such a cutie, isn't he? Yes. I mean, not like he's a kid or anything. He's adorable and I want to pinch his cheeks, e even though he's not a kid. Yeah, I just want to pinch his cheeks. Anyway, I have one last question for you. Some people like hearing the trigger warnings before they start games, while others don't really care and just want to play. It's cool either way, but do you want to know about some of the content listed in the game? So for every route that I start, I'm gonna do all the trigger warnings. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like, tell me the trigger warning so you guys know. No problem, it's my pleasure. Well, this game is recommended for players ages 18 and up. Trigger warnings include suicide, war, torture, mentions of rape, and a large amount of violence and sexual content. Don't worry though, any sex scene choice you encounter is completely up to you. You can play this game without needing to go through the sex scenes and still get the good endings. Consent is important. Thanks for letting me know. Oh yeah, friendly reminder, we're doing all the smut scenes. Okay, so if you don't like smut, I will tell you when there's going to be a smut scene. So if you don't like it, then feel free to skip it. I will give you the warning ahead before I make the choice. So just a heed warning. I think that should be everything. All right. Phew, that took a while. I would skip the rest, but it's kind of important with Michaela saying with the game about the game and stuff. So can't skip that. You forgot something. Huh? What did I forget? <sighs> you forgot about the disclaimer. Oh, crap! Oh, how could I have forgotten about that? It's fine. I'll take care of it. <clears throat> this game was produced by Michaela Laws using the Renpai visual novel engine. We truly hope you enjoy this story. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Now, don't you have a war to go fight? I do. I just wanted to make sure everything was in order before the story began. I'll take my leave now. 
Thanks, Di. Di. Do not call me Di. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we really do hope you like the story. Have fun. See you at the end. See you at the end, Kay. This has gone on for long enough. I will not let them trap me in a corner like this. Azira. Mm. Husband. So Azira is one of the demon lord's wives. We don't know who. We don't know who. Well, I know who, but I ain't spoiling shit. So let's go. You're still here. Why have you not left like the others? What do you want? Do you honor our marriage? Sorry if you heard that. Sorry. I don't know. Did you honor our bond when you slept with that whore? Oh. Is she talking about Damien's mom? I'm going to slap the shit out of her. Do not talk about Damien's mom like that. I said... Do you honor our marriage? I do honor it, unlike you. <laughs> she got a point. Then you still stand by our bond? Why are you asking me these questions? Because I need your energy. What? What do you? I'm giving you your physical form back. You should be thankful. Oh. What? What are you? <laughs> I could only stare at what was in front of me. I could hardly believe it was real. But there it was, right before my eyes. How had my life even gotten to this point? As I gripped the pen in my hand, I let my mind settle into the situation. My fingers gently slid over the pen's surface, nervous and sh softly shaking. This was happening. Hey, is everything okay? Cinnamon bud! Cinnamon bud! Yay! I glanced up to see Matthew looking at me with worry. I could only shake my head and smile before signing my name on the paper in front of me. Name. We are going to put Rena, as always. Looking at my own name made me somewhat giddy, especially since it was next to Matthew's. So, what do you think? Matthew looked over and gently rotated the paper on the table to look at what I had written. Hmm. Thank you for coming to our wedding. <laughs> so cute. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just really cool to see our names together. Aww. So cute. I felt a blush run across my cheeks. Was he thinking the same thing I was? Looking at our names together made me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. Looking at Matthew, he was grinning ear to ear, which made me do the same. His smile was practically infectious. Anyways, we are very happy you could all attend. It means so much to us that you support our step forward, and we hope you enjoy the reception. That sounds good, right? Yeah, that sounds good. Wedding preparations were nothing like I expected. I had organized parties before, but my own wedding had become a new foreign adventure for me to figure out with Matthew. Invitations, budgets, the dress, the ceremony, the ceremony venue, the reception hall. It was all crazy! Still, I was glad to know that I was able to do this to be with Matthew. He seemed as excited about this as I was. There was something missing, however. Hey, Matthew? Huh? What is it? Do you think your mom would approve of this? The curiosity of the idea had been eating at me ever since he proposed to me. I knew he wasn't a fan of his father, but his mother was a different story. According to him, she had always been supportive of him right up until he left. Matthew rubbed his head, staring at the table, and thought, Well, I don't know. I think she'd be surprised I'm marrying a human. <laughs> but I think she'd be okay with it in the end. She is my mother, after all. Yeah, that's true. She might have some uh, second thoughts, but then she's gonna be like, Nah, this is my son. She, she, she should, he should do whatever he wants. Matthew only smiled and shrugged. I knew it was a bit out of the left field to ask, but I was curious. I wished his mother could be able to attend the wedding, but I knew that would never be an option. Yeah, because he's trapped in the Demon Lord Castle. Oh. Huh? My thoughts instantly derailed as I caught a ghostly whisper that seemed to reverberate, rev reverberate in the air. I couldn't pin down the location, but I knew that I had heard something. Huh? 
What is it? You didn't hear that? Hear what? I looked at Matthew in surprise. He didn't hear the whisper? It had spoken his true name. I shook my head and rubbed my temples. Maybe I was just imagining things. There it was again! I stood up from my seat and looked around, trying to figure out where the voice was coming from. Who's there? Whoa, whoa! What's wrong? I looked at Matthew. How could he not hear it? I wasn't crazy! Someone's saying your name! Matthew raised an eyebrow, unsure of what I meant. Why didn't he get it? What, what, what was so hard to understand? But I don't hear anything. I know I'm not making sense, but someone keeps saying your real name. My real name? Zaketu? Yeah, she keeps saying it and help me. Matthew slowly rose from his seat, looking down at the table in confusion and worry. I could tell he believed me, but I wasn't but wasn't sure how to respond. Are you sure you couldn't hear it? I'm sure. Hmm. Matthew looked up at me and walked around the table to stand next to me, and I turned my body to face him. He looked into my eyes and gently brought his hands to my cheeks. Does she sound like anyone we know? No. I stared as Matthew continued to look into my eyes. What was he looking for? Eventually, Matthew leaned in and placed a soft kiss on my forehead. What? I'll look into it, okay? For right now, don't worry about it and ignore it. It might be an illusion or something. This place is so full of magic, so it could be that. I could tell Matthew was worried. He wasn't making sense. However, I knew that we had a lot on our minds, so this was something that needed to wait. Maybe he just wanted me to not worry. Still, I couldn't help but be worried about it. Matthew gently released me and gave me one of his goofy smiles. Alright, well, I think that's enough work for today. Let's save the rest for tomorrow, okay? I nodded. Today had been pretty stressful, so a rest would definitely be good. Matthew led me back up to our room and got ready for bed. I, however, watched as Matthew absently ruffled his hair. Despite his kid-like demeanor, he was still a man, and he was the one I was going to marry. What was even better about our love was that we both loved every part of each other. I couldn't stop gushing over his eyes, his fluffy hair, his kisses. He drove me crazy as he made me smile every day I spent with him. It didn't help that he was also sexy underneath the baggy clothes he wore. No one was privileged enough to see him bare, and I was the lucky woman given that permission. A simple ruffle on his ha of his hair was enough to catch my attention, and I stared at him. I really loved him. A small fire burned in my core, letting me know of my sexual attraction to him. But I wasn't sure of whether or not to go with my gut or just sleep. Ooh, t yes, doing all the all smut all the way, doing all the smut. So right now, sexual content warning. If you don't want to see it, recommend you skip it. S still kind of weird how a r single ruffle of his hair made us turned on. Whatever, let's tease him. Looking up and down his body, I really couldn't help but let my libido take c control. I let out a soft moan, loud enough for Matthew to hear. I am not making sexual noises. I am that conscience of myself. I am not doing that, okay? He rose, turning to look at me with a blush across his face. Uh, huh? Matthew. I was nervous, but I decided to tease him. I would have to go all the way. I slowly began to strip off my clothes, revealing my underwear and bra. Matthew's eyes darkened into a lustful gaze as I gently ran my fingers over my stomach and between my breasts. We did a lot of work today, but I don't want to sleep just yet. I gently leaned forward and climbed onto the bed, on my hands and knees, letting him enjoy the sight of my cleavage. Jesus! Matthew turned to watch me slowly, not taking his eyes away from me as I crawled forward to his side of the bed. I licked my lips, happy to know that my teasing was working. I finally move I finally stopped moving my moving forward and got up on my knees leaning back a bit and stretching my arms behind my head why not make the night a bit better with me I almost couldn't recognize my own voice however I went along with it he wasn't the only one in the relationship that could set a mood even though he was the incubus 
As Matthew stared, I felt a soft heat envelop my core and rush through my body, another moan coming out of my mouth. I looked into Matthew's eyes, seeing them glow a loving but lust-filled gold. It slowly faded as the enthrallment he cast on me ran through my body, making me hotter. Oh, sweet Jesus, help me. Ah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just going to calm down now. Here, while I calm down, just have a minute to view that. Whew. May I need, need I remind you that this was once my phone screen. <laughs> Shocking as it is. Okay, let's get back to the plot. Matthew slowly began to strip off his jacket and shirt, letting me enjoy the show. Before he licked his lips, he knew exactly how to respond to my teasing. And despite it not being fair, he used his inhumane charms to make my mind melt at the sight of him. As he pulled his shirt off his body, he held it out to the side, letting me get a good look at his chest. I felt myself lick my lit own lips at the sight. Then, let me make it better. Ah! The way he said it. It sounds, it sounds he like he's trying, but at the same time, it sounds like he's, he's just like, I don't know. It just sounds like he's trying. Ethan, you tried. You tried. Trust me. It, it's good, but you tried. That was all he needed to say before coming over to me and crawling over my body, capturing my lips with his, with his in a heated kiss. His arms wrapped around my waist as his other hand gently slid down behind my back and gingerly held my rear. I let my legs move out from underneath me so that he could kneel between them, gently grinding my knee against his. He smirked against my lips as he gave a playfully slow grind with his hips against my core. That's gonna turn me on a lot. My mind went crazy at his teasing foreplay. He pulled me against his body, squeezing me with his arm around my waist, before deepening the kiss between us. I let a moan escape my throat and became lost in his mouth as he claimed my lips for his. I loved feeling him touch me, hold me to him, and hold me to him. He was the man I loved, and I wanted to give him everything as he gave me just as, as much and more. Our sex became just another way to express our desire and love for each other. Soon enough, we were both panting and moaning hotly as we made deep and passionate love. Our clothes were strewn across the room, but our focus was in each other's eyes. His moans echoed mine as, his ki as he kissed and nipped over my neck and shoulders. However, he'd always come back to stare into my eyes and kiss me deeply as he made love to me, as I made love to him. I loved him and wanted to be held by him and be full of him forever. My heart belonged to him and he would dream be and he was a dream come true for me. To feel his love for me was a blissful treasure I would cherish and experience for the rest of my life. He always knew how to find my sweetest spots and knew the ways to make me buck and scream his name. We rose higher in our pleasure and ecstasy until we ran over our limits and ever so gently floated back into the loving feeling of our embrace. Matthew could only pant and hold me in his arms, sweetly petting my hair and kissing over my forehead. I love you so much. I love you too, you cinnamon bun. I love you too. My heart fluttered at the sound of his voice. He was my everything, everything, and to feel him in my arms made me happy beyond compare. I happily embraced the darkness of sleep as Matthew continued to hold me in his arms. The darkness was meant to be p peaceful. Sleep was meant to be relaxing. However, my mind began to wander to what had happened earlier that evening. Hearing that voice made me worried. Something was off. Something was going on, and I was the only one who could sense it. Why, though? I let the darkness seep into my mind a little longer, unsure of what to think of it. What the? <laughs> I opened my eyes and found myself no longer in my bed, but on a stone-cold floor staring at a high marble ceiling. Despite feeling foreign textures beneath my skin, I vaguely knew where I was. I was in the main hall of the Demon Lord's castle. I remember the sight from the vision the boys gave me when Diana first appeared. Why was I here, though? Where? <gasps> my instincts forced me to turn to the sound, and I saw someone I did not expect. Diana? Held in the air was Diana, hanging from four long lines of chains that were attached to her wrists and ankles. 
She was spread out like a star and the chains were pulling her body in different directions, seemingly ready to rip her in half. My mind couldn't fathom why she was in this illusion, if this was one. She looked so different, but I could tell it was her. Why she was in chains. Why was she in chains, though? <laughs> Release me! Oh, I will. Oh, what? 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 No! Okay, Matthew's voice reverberated with a cold, demonic resonance, and it drew my eyes toward him in shock. There he was, sitting on the throne, practically lounging on it. He was still in his human form, but his eyes were glowing in unnaturally gold color. What was even more odd was that he was smirking at Diana. I had never seen him smirk like that, like he was enjoying seeing someone's pain. I'll kill you once I'm bored of this game. Your struggle is just so much fun to watch. Why am I suddenly... I have... I can't express my feelings right now, but... I don't know. I don't know what to feel. I don't know what to say. Let's just... You think this is funny, brat? <laughs> Matthew glared as the chains pulled harder on Diana's limbs. I flinched from the sound of her body stretching, almost hearing the sound of bones cracking. Diana, however, sneered at Matthew in reply. Do you really think calling me a brat is going to help you? Well, that's what you are. A brat who abuses his toys until they break. Oh. I could only stare at the two, completely confused by what, what I was witnessing. I tried to speak out, but suddenly my voice disappeared before any sound could be formed in my throat. Gripping my neck, I looked down, trying to figure out why I couldn't speak. Okay, first we went from having sex with Matthew to having this nightmare with Matthew. Come on! Make up your mind! Brain! Uh, character's brain? Whatever. There was some sort of vice pressing, pressing through my vocal cords, not allowing me to mutter even a single sound. Its weight made me almost choke. However, I looked back up as Matthew gave a sickly, evil chuckle. That's right. I like to play with my toys until they're of no use to me. That's how toys work. Wow. This is one sadistic motherfucker right now. Matthew stood up slowly from the throne, and his lips curled into a devilish smile as his tongue ran across his upper lip. And when I'm done with them, I destroy them. And what of the human? Is she just another toy? I better not be another toy. I better not be another toy. I looked at Diana, seeing her move her head to look at me, before turning back to Matthew in realization. I was physically there. I wasn't just watching the event. I was a part of it. Matthew looked back at me and his face shifted to an innocent smile. My heart desperately clung to the possibility that he wasn't as evil as he was presenting himself to be. His smile pulled at my heartstrings, giving me hope that he was just playing some sick joke. Please, please, I'm not another toy, am I? She's not just a toy. Ah, oh, come on! My heart dropped t in my chest. My heart dropped in my chest. Matthew tilted his, tilted his head cutely, giving me a disgusting feeling of adoration and fear from the sight. Never had I imagined feeling like this while looking at the one I loved, yet here I was. She's my favorite toy. I can't break the toy that I have the most fun with, especially when that toy gives me so much energy. That sounding- please don't. Please don't. Like a predator, Matthew began to walk towards me, passing underneath Diana's hanging form. I couldn't move as he knelt down and cupped his hand around my chin. I'll keep you with me forever and ever. Jesus, no! Fear seared, on my, seared my nerves. I did not want to be near this man. This wasn't Matthew. It couldn't be. There was no way. As he stood up, I felt tears run down my face. If this was a nightmare, I wanted to wake up. Please. Matthew's hand pointed at the throne and glided through the air back to me. The sound of chains echoed through the room, forcing me to follow it and see a chain flying at me. Oh, come on! I tried to scream as it leapt toward my throat. From thin air, a shackled collar formed around my neck, connecting to the chain as it reached me, and I was pulled forward roughly through the air before landing beside the throne with a painful thud. 
No! Ah! Diana screamed as a large cage suddenly formed around my body, making its prisoner, making me its prisoner. I scrambled to my knees and gripped the bar surrounding me, now frightened beyond compare. Matthew let out a terrifying laugh, sending more waves of fright through my body. This wasn't happening! This world is mine! No one can stand in my way anymore! Not James, not the Demon Lord, and not you, Diana! Smirking wildly, Matthew looked at Diana, raising his arm across his body. And I've grown tired of you. Oh god. Before Matthew could move, my fear and anger quickly bubbled in my chest, one word pushing past the blockage in my throat. STOP! As my voice ripped through the air, everything went black. Okay. My body, however, sat up in bed in shock from what I had seen. My scream reverberated through the room as I let it sink in that I was awake and all of that had been just a nightmare. Had just been a nightmare. Despite it all feeling real, I was no longer in a cage. I wasn't in a room with Diana being ripped apart. I wasn't... Ah! What? Why is he shirtless? Why is he shirtless? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna not question that because let the man be shirtless if he wants. Ah, uh, oh well. I shot my head to the side to see Matthew in bed with me, sitting up beside me and rubbing his head. Well, ah, uh, never mind. A heavy tiredness weighed down the eyelids over his frightened eyes, but my mind suddenly began to seize in fear just looking fr looking at him. Oh. My mind shouted that it had been, it had been just... Ah. My mind shouted that it had just been a nightmare, but my body couldn't help but remember what Matthew had done to me in that dream. It may have been fake, but I couldn't stop the fright from washing over my nerves. Tears formed in my eyes as I stared at Matthew. I wanted to know that everything was fine, that I really was more than just a toy for him, but my voice wouldn't let me speak without bawling. Matthew quickly rubbed his eyes and stared at me, his concern obviously deepening at seeing me in tears. He slowly raised his arms to embrace me, but I flinched away, causing him to freeze in place. Whoa, whoa! It's okay. It's alright. It's just me. Matthew's voice tried to warm over my fear, but my feelings were still conflicted, despite my brain knowing better. He continued to stare at me, waiting for me to relax. I could only meet his gaze warily with both fear and sadness. Hey, I'm gonna hug you, okay? That's all. My heart wanted to believe him. I had to. He couldn't be as sadistic as my nightmare had depicted him. I nodded and Matthew slowly began to wrap his arms around me, hugging me to his chest. There we go. It's okay. I began to melt into Mouth Matthew's arms, finally feeling the fear disappear from my body. I pressed my face into his shoulder, shaking in remorse as the panic drained away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Matthew simply rocked me in his arms and nuzzled the side of my head with his. He occasionally planted a kiss over my cheek and shoulder, reminding me of his love and that everything was okay. His breath became a temple for me to follow, letting me relax and feel his love all around me. Bad dream, huh? Yeah. Matthew gave me a soft squeeze, snuggling up to me as, and I gratefully snuggled back. He would never hurt me. I couldn't let myself be this affected by a nightmare. Hopefully he wouldn't ask about it. Hey, whatever the dream was, just know that everything will be alright, okay? It was just a stupid nightmare. Whenever you wake up, I'll be right here beside you, ready to make it go away. The way he sounded so confident made my heart flutter in my chest. He truly cared for me, and that was something I adored about him. He loved me, and I loved him in return, just as much. I nodded and nuzzled in his shoulder, warming into his embrace further. Matthew smiled and kissed the top of my head. As I closed my eyes, he gently laid us back down onto the mattress, and helped me shift to lie against him, making his chest my pillow. Thankfully, the nightmare didn't return that night. I was left with a warm embrace and a peaceful slumber until the morning rose. Even in the days that followed, the nightmare didn't come back. Neither did the mysterious voice. Or neither. Neither, neither. Neither did the mysterious voice. My week became peaceful, final details for the wedding becoming o our only focus. I was nervous for it, and soon, the day of the wedding had snuck up on me, and I was in my room, staring at myself in my wedding dress. 
I could hardly believe it. I was getting married. My family and the guests were all at the church, waiting for me to march in. But I was so nervous I hadn't left the mansion yet. It was only a three-minute drive away, so it wasn't like I was in a terrible rush. Looking at the digital clock in my room, I marked the time. Thirty more minutes. I let out a sigh. I had asked my friends to allow me to get ready on my own, so I was alone in the ma mansion. Yet, even while I was alone, the anxiousness of the wedding made me nervous. Why? Was I just that excited? Running a hand over my dress, my fingers traced over the seams and int intricacies of the design. It was indeed my dream wedding dress, down to the latest detail. My parents fronted the bill as congratulations, which, made, which still made me laugh. How they had ever come to accept Matthew was a mystery to me, especially when he was incredibly vague about who he was. I blamed his incubus magic. Before I could wander further, farther into my nostalgic memories, I heard my phone ring, ushering me to quickly answer it. Hello? Hey, Lucky Bride. We have a little bit of a problem. What's the problem? My mind quickly froze. A problem? What could possibly be wrong? Now you're scaring her, Naomi. Carrie! I don't mean to. Just tell her about the rings. Huh? The rings? What about the rings? Well, apparently Matthew forgot to bring them. He knows where they are, but you'll have to bring them with you when you come. I let out a small sigh. It wasn't a big problem. Thank goodness. It was something that had an easy solution. Oh, okay. That's fine. Where did he put them? Well, he said he put the rings in his dresser drawer. He said it was so... Simon couldn't get them? Ah, uh, Simon Tabby. Who could forget about Simon Tabby? Oh, jeez. Really? I rolled my eyes. Simon wasn't that bad. Besides, he was just... He was a doll. Sure, he was a doll that could move and stuff. But he wasn't evil. Just a bit mischievous. Alright. I'll bring them over. Meet me at the front of the church, and I'll hand them over before the wedding starts. Got it. See you soon. I hung up and smiled. At least the issue wasn't something outrageous. That would have been mortifying. Quickly, I rushed over to the dresser and opened the drawer, expecting to see the ring box in plain sight. What the? When I looked inside, I found nothing except clothes. I opened each drawer of the dresser checking each nook and cranny while moving clothes around to find the box. Nothing. <laughs> Simon Tabby! I looked up and glanced around the bedroom, unsure of why Simon was laughing. He was, was he, he was really wanting to play a game right now? Damn it, Simon! I hiked up my dress and began to search the halls of the mansion, determined to find Simon. He had to have the rings and I was in no mood to play around. Simon, give me those rings. He couldn't have gone far. I decided to check this floor before going downstairs. Hmm. Office? Looking around the office, Simon was nowhere in sight. I grumbled to myself. Where the hell can that thing be? I sighed before leaving the office, walking towards another room. Why the office again? Lobby. Looking around the lobby from the top of the balcony, Simon was nowhere in sight. However, before going downstairs, I needed to check the other rooms first. Uh, library. Looking around the library, Simon was nowhere in sight. I grumbled to myself. Oh, where the hell can the thing be? I decided before leaving the library, walking towards another room. Looks like we only got the bathroom. I stepped into the bathroom, looking around and hoping to find the fur ball somewhere with the ring box. Alas, he didn't seem to be anywhere in sight. What the hell? I grumbled to myself before turning to leave. However, my eyes locked onto the bathroom mirror, seeing something that made my heart freeze up. Around my neck was a large tattoo-like mark resembling a blue chain. It was almost gluing over my skin, and the nightmare suddenly rose into my thoughts, reminding me of the fear I had felt. Staring at it, my body began to tremble as the mark seemed to snake around my neck like a moving shadow. For a moment, I thought the mark would tighten it against my neck from simply watching it circle over my skin. I brought my hands to my throat, trying to cover it. I didn't want to see it. It had to, been, it had to have been an illusion, right? 
I was imagining it. I hesitantly removed my hands from my neck and sighed in relief to no longer see the chain mark. I was freak freaking out over nothing. I rubbed my eyes gently, relieved. Jeez, I'm getting worked up over... However, as I looked back up at the mirror, around my neck was a blue collar. I reached to my neck and gasped as I physically felt the collar around my neck. Are you serious right now? Close your eyes, get it off. I think I need to calm down. I closed my eyes. This was a mistake. This had to be a dream. I was dreaming and I needed to wake up immediately so that I could find the rings and get married. Please let this be a dream. As I opened my eyes, I locked my eyes onto the collar that was still around my neck. My mind began to launch into a frenzy. Why was it there? At that moment, a word came up in my mind. I wasn't sure how it got there or why I thought of the word, but it appeared in my thoughts as if it was exactly what I was thinking about. My fingers began to tingle slightly as it resonated in my mind. As I opened my mouth and let it fly from my tongue, I felt my body slightly warm in reply. Salivable. The collar somehow responding to what I had said dis began to quiver around my neck before fading into black mist and disappearing into the air. I instinctively sighed in relief. It was off. Thank God. I rubbed my neck grace gratefully feeling o only my skin and silently appreciating the sensation of my fingers running over my bare neck. I knew it. I knew it. That girl has demon magic. What the? Then quit talking and let's take her. The demon lord will be so pleased. Not this shit again. Okay, instead of staying still, I might as well just say cry. Because that's exactly what I'd probably do. This wasn't happening. This couldn't have been happening. No way. I felt tears build up in my eyes as I lowered them to look at the floor in front of me. As I felt, as my gaze fell, my lungs began to seize hard, forcing me to hiccup up in sadness. Uh um, ugh. she's like, oh no, she's crying. What do I do? What do I do? I couldn't help it. I began to cry profusely. Why was this happening? Why was I here? If this was another nightmare, I wanted to wake up immediately. This wasn't right. I covered my face and cried into my hands, curling over myself as I let sadness run through my entire body. Please let me wake up. Please. As I felt warmth th suddenly spread through my body, I slowly stopped and felt fresh air rush into my lungs. Why was this? Ha what was happening? I recognized this warmth. I looked up to see Diana kneeling down with a very concerned look on her face, her visible eye glowing a warm gold color as she stared at me. Was she enthralling me? I didn't feel aroused, but like I usually, like I felt usually when I was enthralled, but I felt calm and almost mellow. Calm down. Diana's voice seemed almost soothing, like a lullaby. However, I wasn't sleepy. Sleepy, I just felt quiet. The way I had it in my mind was gone. The sadness gone. Diana must have done something to make sure I wouldn't cry. I didn't know whether to thank her or be afraid. Now, can you tell me what happened? Take your time and try to remember everything. Succubus, we have no time for- Shh! Let her do her thing! The human obviously knows her, and she obviously needs help. Poor thing. That sounds like Faye, yes. You tell Sergeant Faye, if you didn't see, if, if you don't know those voices and uh, all those other people, go check out my Damien outbook and then come back. And I'll tell you, but those who've seen it before and know who these people are or just don't care to go back at all, then prepare to be spoiled a bit. If you don't know things, okay. Why did she call her Diana, though? That must have been the human name she used while she was in the human world. Smart. Shadow? Shadow Sprite. Yep. All of you, please. Silence engulfed the room as Diana looked at the four beings behind her. She then turned back to me and held out her hand, ushering me to take it. Can you stand? I nodded and took her hand, standing up at last. Okay, so we're going to explore again. There was no way I was letting this chance pass me by. I stood and walked towards the door, opening in a crack and looking around. There was no one in the hall, but there was two directions to go. Which way? Let's go left. I went with left. Uh, but, uh, how does there find a way around yet? Uh, 
left. Let's go right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Beware my evil reign and bow to your new overlord. <laughs> Is that Faye? Oh my god. What the? I turned towards where the shout was erupting from and saw a door ajar. As I peeked into the room, the door... Into the room the door led into, I stared at what I saw, had saw. Fae! Yay! They look so, They're a fairy. We don't know their gender. They're a fairy. They're so cute. Looks like a girl, though. But it could be a boy. I don't know! A floating creature was standing over top of the table that, had, that held a map and miniature pieces as if someone had set up a strategy board game. The creature was planted on top of a red marker as if the marker was their mount. I will rule the entire world, and no one can stop me, because I am the Demon Lord! <laughs> Jesus! As it switched to a different personality, the creature quickly jumped and floated over to a purple marker, striking an exaggeratedly sexy pose. Oh no! I will stop you with my massive boobies and butt powers! I will rule this world, not you, and everyone will love me. Jesus, Faye, what the hell? Are you pretending to be Diana at this point? Oh my god. I had to suppress my laughter so you could hear them. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. As I, I watched as the creature bounce back and forth bet between pretending to be the demon lord and Diana, lost and intrigued as to how small and quick they were. <laughs> Your boobies cannot scare me, for I have a penis, and penises ward off fear! Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my god, I'm, do I'm done with you, Faye. I am so done with you. I can't. You may have a penis, but I have an army that practically worships my overly curvy and ridiculously perfect body. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my god. I can't, I can't anymore. I stifled a laugh. This was actually rather amusing to watch, seeing the creature imitate the demon lord and their own leader. Then come here, and I will show you the true power of a demon lord. Soldiers, attack! I stared as the creature suddenly formed multiple little miniature soldiers on opposite sides of the table. Wow. Using magic to make them clash and smack against each other as if an invisible child was playing with them. I hear squeaky toys. There were even some small squeaky stuffed animals and glass figures smacking and crashing together. It was a chaotic little show. Oh no! We're being overrun! Do not hold back! We'll beat him! Ah! Ah! The pain! Why? I see it! I see the light! Ah! I see the light! Don't you? Oh my god, I can't! I couldn't stop the laughter from erupting from my stomach. I began to go to fall, amused by the little show I was witnessing. The creature, in surprise, poofed into a cloud of smoke before appearing and falling back over the side of the table in its regular size. Or at least what I assumed to be the regular size. Sorry, Faye! Whoa! I'm sorry! Are you okay? Yep! I'm okay! Glad to know you're okay, Faye. The creature managed to hop up and start floating again behind the table, giving me a thumbs up as if nothing was wrong. Their clothes were a bit disabled, but they gave me a toothy grin. Hiya! He <laughs> hi. Sorry for disturbing your um huh? Oh, my game. It's okay. I was just getting to the good part. The good part? The creature nodded before leaning over the table and rearranging all of the figurines that still remained on it. Yeah, when Diana kills the demon lord and takes over the world. Oh. Uh the way that they put it made it seem like Diana was going to be o an overlord. Was she really trying to take over the world? The creature looked at me and chuckled. Oh, you don't know what's happening, huh? 
Well, we're all fighting the Demon Lord, and by we, I mean me and Diana and the others. But anyway, we're fighting the Demon Lord because he's a tyrant and we don't like tyrants. So we're going to kill him and take over. Ah, uh, that sounds like a nice plan. They made it so, seem so simple and so joyous. You guys are really going to kill him and take over? Huh? Uh, duh! The Demon Lord is completely crazy! He's burnt down so many villages and destroyed so many forests! He's only causing us harm! That's why we have to stop him! The creature then put the purple marker next to the red marker, glaring at both. We have to kill him before he hurts anyone else! Aww. With a flick of their wrist, they used the purple marker marker and knocked the red one over violently, making it skid across the table towards the edge. Just from the look on their face, it's, they seemed peeved about the demon lord. I would be too. Hell, I already was. You all will win. The creature looked up at me before letting go of the marker and placing their hands behind their head with a grin. You think so? I nodded with a reassuring smile. They seemed confident enough to battle the demon lord, and if it was for the best, then it had to be done. The creature nodded back to me before yawning. Hmm. So, you're gonna marry a demon, huh? Wh what? I stared at them, unsure of where the ch change in topic came from. The creature laughed a bit. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot! Oh, no, it's not that. It's just, where did this come from? Well, you are heading home tonight. This is my only chance to ask... Why? Heading home tonight. Yeah, that's not gonna work at all. Why? Yeah, why a demon? Why not another human? I mean, I'm not against demons and humans getting together or whatever, but I was just curious, you know? There are like billions of humans on your world. Why a demon? Because they intrigued me. Matthew intrigues me, okay? <laughs> I don't know. I took a moment to think about the demon and question whom I was marrying. His face made me smile at the thought of being able to be with him again made... Wow, did I skip over something? Sorry. His face made me smile and the thought of being able to be with him again made my heart warm up in excitement. His presence remained in my heart and I knew my answer. Because I love him. You love him? Yes, I do. The creature stared at me as if I had three heads. What, what is it? Was what I said wrong? No, it couldn't have been because it was true. And yet the creature continued to stare at me oddly. What? Huh? Oh, nothing. It's just weird. What's weird? Love. It's just weird, okay? But if it works for you, that works, I guess. It's not like I'm the one getting married. Ha, uh, you say that. I stared at the creature, unsure of what, what they meant. However, before I could question them, they yawned and stretched out. Alright, I'm gonna steal some snacks. You should head back to your room or whatever so that Diana doesn't catch you snooping around. She doesn't like snooping. Or was it swooping? Uh, I think it's snooping, Faye. The creature sh shrugged as I nodded. It was probably for the best that I returned to my room. I knew my way back, so I left the room and returned to my room. <laughs> <laughs> the guys, once again. My heart almost stopped. Falling from the tear and landing on the table were the five Incubi brothers. Hallelujah! They were piled on top of one another, another, having come through one at a time. However, as the last brother landed, the boys fell to one side, toppling off of the table and landing on the floor. The rebels around me stared at the fallen pile of incubi, confused and surprised, as the tear let in the air closed the ogre man. Wow. As the tear in the air closed, the ogre man was the first to lower his sword. What the hell? Who are they? Careful! They could be the demon lord's men! No! The rebels looked to me as I stood up, Diana following me and, Diana following and still protecting me, as I, and I stared at the boys on the ground. They all looked dazed and a bit shell-shocked from having fallen twice in rapid succession. I almost couldn't believe it. There they were, right in front of me. My mind couldn't help but remember how I had first met them. They had all been on the floor of my mansion, unconscious and wounded. Now there they, now they were in front of me in the demon world. I know them. Matt! 
Matthew is the center of everything now. Ha! I stared at the one I was meant to marry, seeing him slowly shake his head and rise from the ground. They came to rescue me. He came to rescue me. My heart became overjoyed and full of warmth and happiness. I was going to go home. The question was, how? As the sight of the boys kept the demon's attention, a second tear opened above them, causing everyone to look up. Four women dropped down from the chair and somehow managed to fall into the arms of the incubi behind Matthew. I am... I want to know who... Well, I already know who, but I bet you all are wondering who Demon's wife will be, and you'll get to see in a moment. Wow! I gotcha! Carrie and Sam are kind of like match. <sighs> Whoa! Are you okay? Her name is Twyla! She looks... Let's give up a... She looks so cute! Oh my god, why does she... She looks really, really adorable. Why does she look perfect for Damien? Why? Why? They're just... They, they just look so cute. Eric! Love, I've got you! I have my eye on you, Irene. Eric is mine. James! Whoa, are you alright? I stared wide-eyed. Their wives came too? I watched as the boys and the girls finally planted themselves on the ground before looking around. However, Matthew instantly bolted for me, causing Diana to jump away in surprise. Whoa! Matthew wrapped his arms around me, and I instinctively tensed up from being charged at before taking in his scent and physical form. He was here. I wasn't dreaming. He really came for me, and he was here holding me. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine. I almost couldn't believe it, but I wrapped my arms around Matthew's torso, pulling him tighter to me as I took in one more whiff of his scent. However, before I could melt into his arms and relief at his presence, he was forcefully dragged backwards. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Faye, come on! Whoa! Huh? Faye! I watched as the fairy figure gripped Matthew's hoodie and roughly pulled him away from me with an angered face. Wait! Hold on! Matthew! Before anyone could react, Matthew spun around and swiped at the fairy. They squeaked and released him, floating higher into the air. Hands off! You hands off! I quickly rushed over and held Matthew's hand, wanting to bring his attention away from the fairy and back to me. Matthew, ki kiss him, duh! I reached up and grabbed Matthew's face, pulling him to me and kissed him. His eyes stared in shock before he melted against my lips and held my head in his hands, kissing me deeper. I closed my eyes and sank with his as I lowered my hands and wrapped them around his shoulders. I was beyond happy to feel him again. At that moment, I didn't even care how he had found me. I was just happy that he was there with me again. Unfortunately, Matthew and I couldn't stay close for long. The fairy's shouting caused us to pull apart to look at them. He has the same aura as the Demon Lord! Rubbing her head and glaring at the fairy, Diana stepped up, crossing her arms and rubbing her temple. Well, he is the son of the Demon Lord. Exactly. That's not what I meant! I'm, I'm saying... Ugh. What did you mean then? Come on, let's get you home. Matthew gently took my hand and tugged me toward his brothers. However, this time Diana stepped in front of Matthew. I'm afraid she can't leave. And why not? She's been cursed. She can't leave this plane without dying. But if you wish to kill your bride to bring her back to the demon world, then be my guest. Did, did, did Michaela just say, bring her back to the demon world? I am in the demon... Michaela, come on, you had one job. Uh, basically she was supposed to say... Basically what she's trying to say, but if you wish to kill your bride to bring her back to the human world, then be my guest. Michaela, come on. Ah, oh, well, just a mistake. Matthew glared at Diana and stepped in front of me protectively. Why should I believe you? It's true, Matthew. The demon lord cursed me, so I can't leave. I placed my hand on Matthew's shoulder, causing him to turn his head and look at me in surprise. His expression morphed from anger to sudden fear. What? You can't be serious. We are, but don't worry. We plan to kill the one who cursed her soon enough. When? One week's time. One week? What? The white soft shifted into a long-sleeved oversized tunic with a leather corset and vest, while the bottom part of the gown split and wrapped around my legs, forming into dark leggings. My shoes stretched into long knee-high boots. Oh wow, that looks really good on you. Thanks, Iridessa. Thanks so much. I blessed. I blushed. Wow. 
I said the wrong word. I blushed, getting used to the feel of the outfit. The corset wasn't tight, but it was still something new along with the rest of the garb. Matthew, however, smiled down at me and kissed over my forehead. You look really cute. Oh, thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Thanks. Faye, Rabbit, you both should finish your preparations and head over to the Demon Lord's castle for the spell. How are you going to get there? I'll get us there, no problem. <laughs> Just make sure we don't get stuck there or lost. No promises! Sero, make sure the job is done. I shall, my lady. Sero, Faye, and Rabbit began to make their way out of the room as Diana turned to me and my group. As I left, Diana let out a small sigh. I will take you to some rooms you may rest in. Thank you, Diana. Diana merely nodded and led our group out of the room towards our new temporary rooms. Alright, so I'm going to end this episode here. And we'll continue on in the next video. So, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoy... If you guys... Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!